Come with me to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Chapter number five, beginning with verse one. And actually, I'm only going to deal with verse one on today. Matthew, chapter number five, verse number one. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. The word of the Lord is blessed. His disciples came to him. For a few moments, or today, I want to talk to you from the subject, fellowship, fellowship. I truly believe that we can all agree on today that our connection with Jesus Christ matters. Amen. Not only does our connection to Christ matter, but our commitment to maintaining our connection with Christ is equally as important and it requires our undivided attention. It's extremely important that our connection and our commitment to Christ always be at the forefront. It should always be the focal point of what we think what we say and what we do. Our connection and our commitment to God leads us to seeking after him day and night with a sense of urgency. The seeking after him or following after him is the fuel that births our discipleship well. and it energizes our mentorship. In the times that we live in, following Christ not only brings life, but it gives us direction. It gives us direction as we navigate the complications that life throws at us. In our dealings with Jesus and as dedicated followers, we grow to understand more and more what is acceptable and unacceptable to God. In Micah chapter 6, Verse 8, it states, He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Through our fellowship and being attentive to his teachings, he shows us how we are supposed to live. He shows us how we are supposed to love. And he shows us how we are to walk in a land that is consumed with darkness. And due to the fact that we have been attentive to Jesus, these messianic teachings from the Messiah himself begin to penetrate our hearts 
by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And when the life of Christ and the teachings of Christ penetrate our hearts, they bring about a change of heart and a change of behavior. My brothers and my sisters, being connected to Christ ushers in divine modifications that lead to righteous changes. And as we move, and as we are divinely shaped and molded, Jesus begins to elevate us with the fresh wind. And he elevates us suddenly. When we are connected and committed to Jesus, Jesus ushers in a change of heart. The ushering in of the change Elder Keel is suddenly. When we are connected and committed, Jesus renews our minds and he renews our thoughts and the renewing takes place suddenly. When we are connected and committed, Jesus mends relationships and he mends broken hearts and think it was he does the mending suddenly when we are connected and committed Jesus alters the direction of our lives and he elevates our influence and the alteration and the elevation it takes place suddenly when we are connected and committed to Jesus, he gives us a new outlook on life. And he gives us a new outlook on what life throws at us. This new vision is manifested in our lives. Suddenly, when we are connected and committed, Jesus inspires our ministry. And he alters the way we navigate amongst the saints. The inspiration and the movement begins suddenly. As we embrace this suddenly season of fulfillment as followers of Christ, we experience the newness of life as we are connected and committed to the most high. We grow, my brothers and my sisters, in trees of righteousness. See, the Bible says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and if I remain in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. All right. No. Apart from me, apart from me, you can do absolutely nothing. But Sister Sue, I find joy when I think about what he's done for me. I can joy when I think about how he set me free because of our dedication to fellowship. Or today we can declare, we give praise to you for everything that you do. We cannot forget all the things you've done, knowing better things are to come. Amen. I get joy, unspeakable joy. Yeah. See, every time I turn around, he keeps drawing me. Yeah. Every time I turn around, he keeps molding me. Every time I turn around, he keeps making me. Every time I turn around, he keeps taking me higher. He just keeps on blessing me. Sometimes I'm not on top. He just keeps on blessing me if I'm asking him or not. He just keeps on blessing me. Everybody, I must tell how you bless 
be Jesus in spite of myself. Does anybody else got that testimony on today? And because we are being changed, and because we are being molded, and because we are experiencing a fresh wind, our desire should be to tell somebody else about a man named Jesus. The early church, Brother Woodard, they agreed that Matthew wrote this gospel. Amen. People knew about this book early on and they accepted it quickly. We know that Matthew had a job of collecting taxes for the Roman government. Think of Woods. We understand that it made him unpopular. Because don't nobody like no bill collector. <laughs> Talk about it. Y'all know. Y'all see the numbers. And let them go to voicemail. Give God some praise for the voicemail ministry. But he was unpopular with his fellow Jews Amen. because of the job he had. She says to Sharon, he was unpopular with the people. But right. well, Reverend Slay, let me tell you something. It didn't stop Jesus from calling him to serve him. Right. So we might be unpopular with the people, but what the people think don't influence what Jesus does. He was still chosen to be an apostle. The Gospel of Matthew, for understanding, was written for the early church community, specifically Jewish Christians. It was written to convey the life, teachings, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The purpose was to show that Jesus was the promised Messiah, Messiah. Well. and to strengthen the faith of the Jewish Christian believers. It was also aimed to bridge the gap between the Old Testament prophecies and the fulfillment of those prophecies in Jesus. Overall, the Gospel of Matthew, this former tax collector, who was not liked right. by his people Amen. because of his job, his book was written to provide guidance, encouragement, and, deep, and a deeper understanding of Jesus' identity and the mission for the church. Mm -hmm. In our text, what I want to do, I want to look at the text through the eyes of those who are being drawn and those who are committed. We're going to look at the text from the standpoint of the followers. See, understand that these seekers, they have witnessed Jesus engaging in the ministry of evangelism. Understand, Jesus has been going from town to town. Yes. All right. From synagogue to synagogue. Check this out. Living the truth and teaching the truth. That's a message. That's right. Uh, amen. He's been going from town to town, from synagogue to synagogue, living the gospel of the kingdom of God while he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. 
Finally, we have those being drawn and those who are committed. They have witnessed the healing ministry of Jesus. Well. Not only have they witnessed the healing ministry, but they participated in the healing ministry of Jesus All right. as he healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among them. All right. And because those being drawn and those who are committed, see, they witness all that Jesus had done. Amen. And because they witnessed what he had done, they had to tell somebody else about a man named Jesus. And because they told other folk about a man named Jesus, other seekers joined in. Take a day when the church started to grow. <laughs> and as Jesus goes, they go. All right. I'm going to say it one more time. As Jesus goes, they go. And because of their going with Jesus and more following behind Jesus, they have witnessed the blessedness of Jesus. Amen. Isn't it good to know that when we follow Jesus and when we are willing to go with Jesus, there's a blessedness that comes with it. Isn't it good to know that when we follow Jesus, and are willing to go with Jesus, that there is a peace that dwells in the midst of life storms. Isn't it good to know that when we follow Jesus, and when we are willing to go with Jesus, even though we may walk alone, All right. we are not alone. See, the songwriter said, I've seen the lightning flash. And I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's break of dashing, which tried to conquer my soul. I've heard a voice of my Savior. He bid me still fight on because he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. See, in their journey with Jesus, these seekers have seen firsthand the power and the compassion of his ministry. They have witnessed him healing people from various diseases and sicknesses. And seeing all of this, my brothers and my sisters, it brings hope and restoration to those in need. See, these folks were looking for hope. And Jesus was that hope. See, if I'm witnessing these miracles, they have been inspired to encourage and encouraged to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ. When we see the works of Jesus, when we see what he's done for us, when we see what he's done for other folk, when we see how folk were sick, and now they're well, amen, Sister Sue, when we see how God has delivered over and over again, we should be inspired and encouraged to continue following Jesus. And we understand because we are connected to Jesus, because we are engaging in a fellowship, there's a blessedness and we experience fulfillment because we are associated with his mission. Yes, amen. The people see this and they want to go up with Jesus. Yes. When we see it, are we willing to go up with Jesus? See, when we go up with Jesus, it ain't always going to be easy. 
When we go up with Jesus, folks are going to walk away. When we go up with Jesus, we will be lied on. We will be talked about. We will be ridiculed. But there's blessedness. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. And as we continue our journey with Jesus as seekers of him we will witness the miraculous. Yeah. We will learn from his teachings. Yeah. See, we have to understand that Jesus is known as being the master teacher. Oh, yes. 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 Amen. We know him as the master disciple, the master mentor, but he is also the master teacher. Yeah. And we will learn from him by studying his parables. Yes, yes. And be getting guidance from his wisdom. Jesus imparts in us profound insights about God's kingdom and how we should live to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. Yes. Through his word, my brothers and my sisters, he challenges our preconceived notions. Yes about life and he challenges our preconceived notions about church yeah. through his words he pushes us to move in excellence as we travail and travel to the next level of service Understand that we should constantly be challenged. <laughs> That's where the growth is. See, if every day was a sunny day, we wouldn't appreciate a sunny day. So there must be challenges. And sister, so these challenges are strategically placed in our path for our good to make us better. This ongoing learning contributes to our sense of blessedness. Amen. And as we follow Jesus, we gain a clearer perspective. We gain new insights through our relationship with him. As we engage fellowship, we become not only followers, but we also become disciples that are eager to learn, eager to grow, and eager to share the transformations that we've experienced. Hallelujah. And our main goal should be to share the gospel message. Amen. With other folks. Amen. With all that said, what advantages does being a devoted disciple of Christ bring? Number one, following Christ leads us in the right direction. All right. Understand as we align our lives with Jesus, we discover the path that God has designed for us to fulfill his purpose. So point number one, Elder Keel following Christ leads us in the right direction. Amen. Number two, Following Christ brings about transformation. Yes. Jesus doesn't just change our external. Well, 
He just doesn't just change that. But he transforms us from within. Guiding us to a place that we need to be. And by connecting with him, we experience personal growth. And we move towards excellence. Point number two. Following Christ brings about transformation. Amen. Point number three. Following Christ leads to elevation. Let me make sure this is clear. Elevation does not mean titles. All right. Well. Speak, 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 speak. Elevation doesn't mean a new position. Amen. But elevation, my brothers and my sisters, is about experience. Experiencing a new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him, we find true happiness yes. and success. And he provides us yes, he does. with a pattern and an example for us to follow. Yes. Last but not least, point number four, following Christ equips us yes. for evangelization. Amen. Our connection and dedication to Christ empowers us to share his love and his message with others. So we can share the message, but if we don't share love, it falls on deaf ears. Amen. So love and the message Go hand in hand. All right. But also, we are motivated well. by what he has done for us. Amen. So I, I don't know about you, but see, I once was lost. But now, I'm found. I once was blind. But now, I see. I once was sick, but now I'm well. I once was going straight to hell, but I've been redeemed, bought with a price. So the song really says, "It may be through the shadows dim, or over the stormy sea." Yeah. I'll take my cross and follow him wherever he chooses Hallelujah. to lead me. Amen. As we follow Jesus, we will face trials yes. and temptations. Yes. But we must deny ourselves. Yes. Take up our cross yes. and follow him. Yes. There will be blockers yes. and there will be naysayers Along the way, we will deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. There will be those who try to take us out, and there will be those who try to take us down. We will deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. There will be those. Alongside us, that don't want our work yeah. to overtake their work. Oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor this is not a competition. Yeah. But we will deny ourselves, oh, take up our cross, yeah. and follow him. Oh. My brothers and my sisters, wow. when Jesus leads, he leads in the paths of righteousness. Yeah. When Jesus leads, he takes us to a place of 
transformation. When Jesus leaves, he elevates us to a higher level of fulfillment. When Jesus leaves, he equips us to share the gospel message with other folk. See, the songwriter says, let us act that throne of mercy where we find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep contrition. Lord, help our unbelief as we deal with the struggles of life. Lord, don't pass us by when we get agitated. Lord, don't pass us by when we find ourselves burdened with the load of care. Lord, don't pass us by. See, when the church is no longer the church, when the family is no longer the family, when friends are no longer friends, when associates no longer run associates, when we get weary, when we get wounded, sometimes we're going to get tired when our bodies get sick, when we are broken, and we find ourselves abandoned. Jesus, don't pass us by. With Christ Savior, sweet Savior, hear our humble cry. Follow others, thou art calling to thy past. HMBC 5. As we move forward to the next level of service, don't stop going higher with Jesus as we seek to live out our faith. Don't stop going higher with Jesus as we seek to engage fellowship. Don't stop going higher with Jesus as we allow ourselves to be discipled. Don't stop going higher in Jesus as we open ourselves to disciple other folks as we mentor those who are with us as we mentor those who are coming behind us HMBC don't stop going higher with Jesus see the songwriter said I may be in the valley with countless dangers they hide I may be in the sunshine that I'm in peace about but this one thing that I know if it be dark or if it be fair if Jesus goes with me I'm going to go I'm going to go anywhere if we have to press our way through we will go where he wants us to go in the land of darkness gloom and doom we will go where he wants us to go if we have to travel all alone we will go where he wants us to go if we have to sing all by ourselves if we have to pray all by ourselves if we have to shout all by ourselves if we have to eat all by ourselves if we have to preach all by ourselves if we have to evangelize all by ourselves we will go where he wants us to go now let us have a little talk with Jesus let us tell him about our trouble. He will hear our faith is cry. He will answer by and by. And you can feel a little prayer will burn. You know a little fire burn. Just a little talk with 
Jesus will make it right. If it is the pride, Jesus will make it right. If there are giants in the land, Jesus makes it right. If you burn and consume with hopelessness, Jesus makes it all right. You may be struggling. Jesus makes it all right. You may be healing. You may be losing your mind. Your family may not be acting right. The job situation may seem grim. Ministry may not look the way you want it to look. But just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Jesus will tell in the beginning. Jesus will faith. Jesus the truth. Jesus the life. Jesus the Lord Bible Jesus the life giver. Jesus the heart fixer. Jesus the mind regulator. Jesus the wine maker. Jesus the good teacher. Jesus our true deliverer. I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior and friend. And I know that he is with me. He'll be with me until the end. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promises just to know thus saith the Lord so what advantages does being a devoted disciple of Christ bring we got four following Christ leads us in the right direction following Christ brings about transformation Following Christ, it leads to elevation. And following Christ equips us for evangelization. My brothers and my sisters, as we go higher, as we go higher with Jesus in ministry, we see that we have fellowship. We have discipleship. We have mentorship. And we have fellowship. The songwriter says, in hymn number 141, I was sinking. Deep in sinking. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply. Staying within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I in Jesus there's safety. In Jesus, there's peace. And as we follow him, we go in the right direction. We have transformation, elevation, and evangelization. Let us engage in fellowship. The doors of the church are open.